Tonight, we explore which James Bond gun was best, how a man named Joffrey forever changed 007, and you determine if I earn a license to kill. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. Before we dive into which gun James Bond would have been most likely to use, let's look at a little bit of a history recap. Now, originally in the books, 007 actually did not have a Walther PPK. The first 007 book, Casino Royale, released in 1953, Bond carried a Beretta M418, which is a 25 ACP pocket pistol. Now, he actually used that for the first five books. One day, Ian Fleming, gets a piece of fan mail from a guy named Joffrey Boothroyd. And Joffrey basically said, hey, look, Ian, your, your man Bond there is not gonna last very long because he's using a severely underpowered round and no offense, also kind of a ladies pistol. Ian Fleming actually found it interesting because this guy was a firearms expert and he actually brings on Joffrey as a firearms technical advisor. In the sixth book, Dr. No, that is when Bond gets his PPK. Now on the movie side of it, Dr. No comes out in 1962, that is the first Bond movie, and in Dr. No, James Bond gets his PPK. 17 Bond movies spanning from 1962 to 1965 use the PPK. Tomorrow Never Dies comes out in 1997, a pretty bad Pierce Brosnan iteration, and that is when he gets his P99. Four movies spanning from 97 to 2006 use the P99, and in 2008's terrible Quantum of Solace, Daniel Craig goes back to the PPK, and that is what has been used ever since. So in total, there are 25 Bond films spanning the course of 60 years, and only two pistols have been used. And that begs the question, which Bond gun is the best Bond gun? Okay, everyone, let's start getting into it. Uh, yes, the dog is back on set. I know you're all happy to see that, but more importantly, big thanks to Collectors Firearms for sponsoring the video today. So they brand themselves the best damn gun shop in the world, and I can get on board with that. They're based down in uh, Houston, Texas, but what if uh, I or you are not in Houston? 
I'm glad you asked. If you would be so um, inclined, you could probably jump on the World Wide Web and type in something to the effect of collector's firearms, and you could find uh, that. We enjoy normal guns like uh, like like the next guy, but we really love kind of high-end, unique things. They have a ton of that. They've got over 12,000 things uh, in stock, ranging from new to used to antique, with the prices ranging from 100 bucks to half a freaking million dollars. So um, I would love to know what that thing is, and I would love to get my hands on it at some point. So big thanks to Collector's Firearms for sponsoring the video today. We've got a lot to cover as we are looking at the subject of James Bond guns today. We're going to be looking at both the Walther PPK and the Walther P99. We are also, I say we, uh, really, I am going to compete for a license to kill. Okay, everyone, so here's what we're gonna do today uh, with Chris being uh, absent in today's video. I am going to compete in many ways against myself to earn my license to kill today. You can clearly see here, um, we do have an official... No! Oh. Okay, everyone, you can clearly see here uh, this is a license to kill. Currently, it is issued to no one. By the end of the day, it might be issued to me. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to compete uh, against myself and the two different Walthers here in a series of challenges that James Bond would deem things important to him and what he would look for in his firearm. Based on my performance on these drills, you can vote and determine if I have earned this very prestigious uh, license to kill. And if I do earn it, then I guess everyone better watch out because I can legally make some shit happen. So the first drill we're gonna be doing is sort of the concealability drill, if you will. We're gonna run the classic James Bond scenario where he's walking along and he spins and he shoots in a target. If you guys are the target, I'm walking along, spin, shoot, hip shoot, and we're gonna just see what kind of accuracy we can get out of the PPK and the P99. Okay, that would be a mic, cruising along, threat, yes, gut shot, and with 380, that's a kill shot my friend, give her one more go, yes, Huh? It's not bad. Not bad at all. PPK is beginning to take its toll on my hand, although we're towards the end of the day, so hopefully we'll survive. Okay. Come on, son. Full of smoke. Just got smoked by your boy. Just cruising along. Bad guy. Guys, I'm not saying this to brag or anything, but get, get pretty good at this shit. Even Babe Ruth misses sometimes. At the end of the day, P99 has got to take the cake here because we got a we got a gut shot, but we got a decent center mass hit, and then we got two guts. So and a and a mic on both runs. So, so far P99 is up. Okay, so as we know, our manned bond isn't just about killing bad dudes and doing espionage. He has certain social considerations he needs to make when choosing which firearm he's gonna use. Amongst which is our boy likes to drink. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the martini challenge. Now, this is very simply a competition stage. We've got three bad guys downrange, and we are gonna run a stage, the goal of which is to both be accurate, fast, and keep as much of this martini with olive in this very nice glass as possible. It's anyone's guess how this one's gonna go. I am of course gonna have to reload because I've only got six rounds. Haven't quite figured out how that's gonna go yet. Here we go. Stop, or I'll sh shoot. That one 
just took a bite out of my hand. No slide release on the Walther. No, oh, no. Ah. Time. 44-16. Hand. Taking a beating. Martini held up pretty well though, if I'm being honest with you. Olive's still intact and a, I'd say a solid 80% of the liquid. All right, the hits. Hit. Kind of like a hit. D-zone. D-zone will still do some damage. Yep, torched A-zone. Nice little shoulder wound. Who knows where the other ones went? target did not go as well and I shot at this target quite significantly and hit him in the rib cage once so that's not really what you want this is a stick hit I don't know if that counts as anything martini 44.16 sending it oh, oh that's cold I got a 50% martini and I'm feeling good. A zone, C zone. Excellent. This fool is completely burned down. A zone, A zone, A zone. A zone. Five A zones. He's done. A zone, neck, solid C zone. Come on, everyone, come on. A little bit of credit on that one. Half martini left. You gotta drink it. How is it? Tastes like an organic olive with arrowhead water. Okay, so for our, okay, so for our final challenge, we know that James Bond has a shoot bad guys. We know he likes to drink martinis. There's one other very important social consideration. He makes love often. And the ability to have a weapon close by, concealable, where he could wind up in a gunfight while in the act with a woman, this would be very important, which we shall now demonstrate. Hey guys, if you're looking for, anyways, support the syndicate, um, that'd be great. We're a real estate company. Uh, we take our business pretty seriously, as you can imagine. Me and Sally out here getting it in. Uh, we also have a Patreon. That's basically where you just throw us money. It helps us buy um, props and things that we need in our life uh, for professional filming purposes, which probably sounds a, a tad bit odd. But um, anyway, there's Patreon, there's real estate, check out some other stuff, newsletter, all that good stuff. Back to the video. No, malfunction, Nadia, help! Ah, 
Are you okay? It's fine. Solid C zone, solid C zone. And that was the most awkward position. C zone, damn it. One C zone, a little bit of a hip shot and a mic. Okay, not too bad, woman survived. Nadia, huh? Nadia, Nadia's always hot. Nadia, let's get the beat done. Oh, feisty, huh? Woman, what did you, run! Woman, do not ever tell me. Someone when I'm in Monte Carlo. A zone, money. C zone, money. A zone, C zone. We got a C and an A. P99 clearly taking the cake today. It doesn't matter if you are doing a point shoot from the hip. It doesn't matter if you're going two to the body, one to the head. It doesn't matter if you're drinking martinis. It doesn't matter if you're getting your, you know, getting your, your shit done. P99 is the winner. So now it's up to you guys. You can vote uh, down in the comments. Did I earn with this performance today? Did I earn my license to kill? All right, everyone, let's start looking at the PPK and then we'll get into the P99. So the PPK was really designed as a CCW pistol um, upwards of 80 years ago now. So it has been around for a hot minute. It's chambered in 380 auto. Yes, that is not the most powerful round in the world. It suffers from, the, look, the PPK has many problems. Okay, let's just go ahead and clarify. The PPK is not like a fantastic firearm by most like data sort of driven metrics. 380 and it's got a six round capacity. So um, shot placement would definitely be very important with the PPK. It also has a lot of recoil for a 380 auto pistol, which is odd given that it's not a lightweight gun by any stretch of the imagination. It actually comes in at 19 ounces. So it is a bit strange when you shoot it because it honestly recoils like nine mil, um, except it's a weaker round in a heavy gun. And I can't really explain why this recoils as heavy as it does. Um, slide bite is a very real issue with the PPK. And we, and it's illustrated. Uh, you, you will notice that I'm sure some of you have already made fun of me in the comments. You're like, Jake, why are you shooting with this like weak ass grip today? This, the PPK is a, is a notorious slide biter. And if you are going to use a modern, if I was going to use my normal grip on a PPK, this is what, you know, it would look like for me. So, I mean, you will notice where that beaver tail is. I would get annihilated by this gun if I were to actually properly grip the gun and really shoot it. So the reality is you kind of have to compromise your grip if you don't want that to happen. I almost use more of a revolver grip and kind of wind up tucking tucking this, this thumb out of the way to prevent that from riding up. Because as soon as that rides up, that's when that meteor hand is gonna get torn up. And I was pretty careful today and still uh, have lost uh, some, some pieces of DNA from my hand there. <clears throat> the trigger is not wonderful. The double action is uh, just over 13 pounds and I would certainly not call it a, like, you know, there's some double action triggers where you go, yeah, it's heavy, but it, you know, it's clean, it's, it's smooth and everything. Um, this is like chunk, chunk, and then it goes, I mean, it's, it's not good. This is my personal gun, just so you guys understand this. I've owned this gun for a long time. I've never brought it uh, up for a video just because I wanted to, I don't know, have the right video, something like this to do it for. My gun has actually been worked over. It, it, it went to a gunsmith uh, a long time who was pretty good at what he did and he worked the trigger and the action a little bit. And so, hey, my trigger's cleaned up and it's still pretty rough. So 13.4 pounds on the double action, six pounds on the single. The single is actually pretty decent, um, you know, a little bit of take up there and then no complaints on the, on the single action. It's perfectly adequate. There's not a very audible or tactile reset. Um, so plenty of times, especially if I'm running like a build drill or something, you'll just kind of have some trigger freeze because you're like, man, I, I just can't feel when the thing's resetting. It's just a reality of the gun. Uh, the sights 
are pretty damn bad as well. So uh, they're just these little nubby sights. Again, you got to keep in mind, it's a pistol that was designed 80 years ago. So, you know, some of the things that we take for granted now, red dots, fiber optics, all that kind of stuff, just was not a reality then. So no, the sights are not great, but it's also just a reflection of the time period. Probably the biggest limiting factor on the gun is that there's no you know, like manual slide lock, if you will. So if I go, okay, gun's empty and I just want to lock the slide back, there, there, there is no way to do that. There's no button. There's, there's no anything that you can push to have this lock back. So the only way you will lock a PPK slide back is to have an empty magazine and pull the slide back and then there you go. Um, and again, same thing on a reload, okay? You, you run dry, mag goes in, again, there's no release, so it's a power stroke in order to uh, send the slide back into battery. So just be aware of that. That said, what does it do well? One, it's very concealable, okay? It does have a decocker on this side. So it is very concealable. This is, um, to my understanding, and I'm not a full, like, uh, James Bond nerd. I, I love James Bond as much as the next guy, but I do believe this suede holster. I don't even know if I can, uh, yeah, Vega holster. I've had this thing for a long time. I do believe it is actual, like the, the technical proper Bond holster, and you can flip this to uh, either side if you're lefty or righty. It's cool. Would you ever really want to carry this? No, not really. But it is a concealable pistol, and in terms of things that the PPK does well, it looks incredible. Like that is the number one thing going for the PPK is it, it is still 80 plus years later. It's one of the all time great looking pistols. I, I mean, it is such an attractive firearm and obviously it's connection to bond is what makes people still buy these things. And people buy PPKs in droves, like pretty much as fast as Walther can make these things. Uh, these things go out the door to, uh, to happy owners. So anyway, that's a little bit about the PPK. Let's look at the P99. Okay, the P99 came out in the 1990s and became the Bond gun in 1997's Tomorrow Never Dies. A Bond movie which I have a weird relationship with. I enjoy it. If it's on TBS one day, I'm likely to watch it, but it's also terrible. It's not a good Bond movie, but for some reason I'm drawn to it like every time it's on. And it's kind of a weird introduction of the P990. He's basically going to the armory uh, with the, the Asian chick blanking on her name, Michelle Yeoh. And, um, you know, and he kind of is like, oh, the new Walther. You know, it's a very smooth product placement. No hate. It's just kind of a funny way that they went about it. Um, this year, Walther announced that they were going to be discontinuing the P99 lineup and they were gonna do a send-off edition known as the P99 Final Edition. And when I saw it, I saw it, you know, just like a media photo that they put out. And I don't know what it was about this gun, but I was immediately drawn to it. I was like, man, I, I need that gun. Like aesthetically, it's a very, it, 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 it's a very enjoyable gun to look at for me. I actually find the lines of it and everything to be quite pleasing, but it was also kind of, you know, for me as a, you know, 80s and 90s, kid this was like kind of a part of my you know teenager years you know this was like part of my action movie childhood if you will so i was like man i've never had one i really want to have one these will probably be pretty hard to get i would maybe suggest collectors firearms maybe i even look that up and maybe you, you might want to scope that out um but these will be fairly hard to get um i don't know the degree to how much that they are limited, but I know that they are limited. So, you know, hey, if it's your kind of thing, maybe don't sleep on it too long, especially in something like a final edition. I would guess that the value on these will go up over time. Just taking a guess here. But um, it was definitely a gun that I saw and I was like, man, I, I kind of got to have that. So the P99 eventually was replaced by the PPQ and then the PP, PPQ uh, has now, I believe, either entirely or largely been replaced by the PDP, right? So this is sort of, you know, the last of its generation. And there's, frankly, a lot that the P99 does well. Certainly a lot that it does better than the PPK. Damn near everything it does better than the PPK, uh, other than maybe being bigger uh, and not being quite as iconically sexy as the PPK. Other than that, it does pretty much everything better than the PPK. Um, amongst those, 
the grip angle. So it has a really nice grip angle. Um, it is not nearly as steep as a Glock grip angle. It's definitely not as good as something like a 1911, but it's actually got quite a nice grip angle. Points very nicely. There's no red dot cuts for these. I don't even think it would be possible due to the trigger system, which I'll take you guys through in just a minute. Um, but this is also, I believe, pretty ahead of its time in the 90s. Comes with interchangeable back straps. So if you've got, you know, bigger, skinnier hands or whatever, you can find the back strap that's going to fit you the best. Pretty innovative stuff for the 90s. Um, it also has a paddle magazine release. Um, and I'm a big fan of paddle magazine releases. One, they're fully ambidextrous. You see on the bottom of it, you know, it goes on both sides there. So whether you're a righty and dropping your mags on this side, or if you're a lefty and you're dropping your mags on this side, or even if you're a lefty or a righty and you're using your trigger finger to drop the mag, no problem. Also, again, trying to look at this through the lens of what would a secret British spy want. Well, hey, if you're getting in a lot of gunfights in some hypothetical world, he could wind up shooting offhand and maybe need to do a reload offhand, in which case, again, the paddle is gonna be completely ambidextrous and does work. Now, the P99 was a very popular gun around uh, European law enforcement agencies. And again, I looked that up and I thought, well, that, I think that is relevant to the conversation of, while I'm inserting my opinion of which Bond gun was best, I'm also trying to look at it from the lens here. I know we're playing in like fictional character territory. Don't think I'm oblivious to that. But I go, okay, Bond, whatever, uh, you know, he gets in some shit, he loses his gun or whatever. Hey, at least it is a gun that, since he's primarily in Europe, is carried by a lot of departments. Therefore, hey, maybe he goes up to a cop on the street, he flashes his license to kill, and he's like, I need to commandeer your gun, sir. Um, so, hey, that's a thing. should leave this out here, probably, just for the next person to discover. Okay, so unfortunately, the movie has taken a turn, and Goldfinger has captured Nadia and is now holding her hostage. The good news, I am known as a bit of a sharpshooter, so I will be performing a hostage rescue drill on Nadia. I have about half of the A-Zone head box of Goldfinger. Okay, so the rest of the target is sweet, sweet Nadia who never hurt a soul. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna do it spinning. Who's ever said a mean thing to me? I want you to look at the precision of what just took place here. Sweet, sweet Nadia is fine. Goldfinger just took a, ro a round right through his stupid Goldfinger face. So let's back up the distance. Well, they really gypped her on the these little cup boot there. Goldfinger! Don't do it! Put her down! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's... She's deflating. <laughs> She's... No, God. I smoked her right... Oh, God. That's part of her... That's part of the back of her... Oh no, that is a part of her right there. Oh, there's the exit. <laughs> the exit just right on the dome. I am so sorry. Because you didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. And now that's what's left of your cranium. God damn it. Okay, let's talk about the trigger. The P99 has one of the more interesting triggers I've, I've ever seen. And definitely when people first pick this up, <clears throat> including myself, if you're not used to it, it's like, hang on, what is going on here? There's a, there's a lot. So <clears throat> it's known as the, the AS trigger system or anti-stress. It is a double action, single action, which is counterintuitive because you're like, it's a striker fire gun. How, how's it double single. So it's a double single system, but there's a couple different ways in which you can run the double action portion of it. So if you were to put, let's say you put a mag into the gun, right? So mag goes into the gun and you, you chamber around. Cool. This is the mode you're in currently, which is in essence, like a lightened or sort of pre cocked, uh, double action where what you have is basically a little half stage here that you hit 
where now the hammer or the uh, the trigger is a lot of that take up is out of it. And that is what I believe they mean by anti-stress, which is like, okay, I've got a round chamber. This is how I'm carrying the gun. If I'm in a law enforcement capacity or something, which is largely who this was designed for, go, look, I've got a long trigger pull, but not a heavy one. So I have time on that long trigger pull to hang on, is this what I'm really doing? Or, hey, let off and let's, let's you know, reset here. So you can basically do the long that has this little half stage, and then you can work from there. You basically go to that next wall and then the trigger breaks. At that point, right, the slide would reset. And then the reset is actually very nice reset. Actually, very, very nice reset. Um, and it's very tactile, it's very audible right? It's like, you know, when you hit the reset and you can just work off of that. And what's kind of interesting here is that you can basically reset the trigger to its full lightened double action. If you were to just do a little press check, right? So if you just do a little press check, you'll just reset the trigger. And now you're back at that, like, Hey, you can go to that half stage and then finish it out. Right? So cool trigger resets. And then, Hey, just a little nudge back on the slide. And there you are. So that's the lightened double to single action version. If you wanted to do the heavy version. Okay. So mag goes in the gun and chamber around on the top of the slide here. It very much blends in. It's a, it's a pretty neat little design. There's a button that if you push, Okay, you'll hear that click. Now, what we've got is a full on double action, heavy ass trigger pull. I don't really know that anyone would wanna carry this that way, just because the truth is that first round that you look, I've spoken to someone who's ever been in a gunfight, but I'm just gonna make some assumptions here, which is that first round is probably pretty critically important. Therefore, this long, heavy double action trigger pull is really going to be tough on that first round. And I've run some, some drills, you know, just shooting that long, heavy double action and it's tough. So in basically every case, Hey, I go for that, that lightened version, but if you really wanted to, you could do that. Um, much in the same way that the LEM trigger from HK operates. Uh, this does have the additional benefit of, ammo related malfunction, specifically if you had a failure to fire, right? Let's just say, okay, uh, I, I shoot, but instead of shooting, I get a click instead of a bang. Cool. The trigger resets itself automatically without the slide even reciprocating. Like pull the trigger until that round that has a hard primer or whatever it is, like pull the trigger until the damn thing goes off, right? At which point the slide would reset and now I can just work off of that that normal reset there. So it is a pretty clever, interesting trigger system. Does it feel a tad just, I don't even know out of date. It's, it's just kind of a little otherworldly to be honest with you. You're just like, boy, that, that that's interesting. It's unique. It definitely takes a little bit of time to get used to. You can get good with it, um, but it is unique. Okay. Other things about the P99 chambered in nine mil maybe obviously, but uh, nine mil instead of 380, like the PPK does have a longer barrel than the PPK four inch versus four point or uh, 3.3 inch on the PPK. So of course that longer barrel, longer sight radius would lead to increased accuracy, uh, 15 round capacity instead of six. So literally almost triple the capacity, two and a half times the capacity um, of the PPK on a punchier round. Um, and what's kind of interesting is despite how much bigger the gun is, I mean, overall footprint compared to the PPK, it's a pretty significantly bigger gun and uh, only weighs five ounces more. Of course, that's used polymer on the frame and all that kind of stuff versus an all steel gun on the PPK. But you go, hey, look, a gun that is not um, that much heavier um, despite its performance. And I would also note much like the PPK, even though at a different level of the game, quite a good looking gun. I do think it is a really, really attractive firearm. Okay, so let's litigate this. Who wins? What is the better choice for a Bond pistol? And I'm gonna tell you this, cause I've really kind of battled this uh, throughout designing this video. There's almost no metric by which the PPK is a good gun in 2023. It's just not, I mean, there's like, nothing that it does well other than look good okay and yet i own one and i always will the cool thing about the ppk is it is a connection to pop culture and what's appealing about it is it's a connection to pop culture 
at an attainable price point, right? PPKs aren't trading for thousands of dollars. Like you can, you can go get a PPK. I, I don't know if you can walk into an average gun store and find one, but it's like, I'm sure you can go find a PPK for like sub thousand bucks. Unlike something like the uh, Terran Tactical Pit Viper that gives you that connection to pop culture on a far less iconic movie character, but it gives you the connection to pop culture, but it costs you $7,000, right? And doesn't perform that good either. Um, or take the, for those of you that might be watch guys, right? Take the No Time to Die Omega Seamaster. Again, you get the James Bond connection, the pop culture thing, but those things are going at 10 grand these days. And I, you know, hey, the, the watch guys can get down in the comments and litigate it. I think that watch is, uh, the, the more I've, study that watch, the more I dislike it. But hey, maybe that's, maybe that's just me. So by virtually every metric, the P99 is the correct answer. The cinema nerd in me wants to vote PPK here because it's like historically correct. The tactical guy in me that trains and is a gun guy says, well, he has to pick the P99 based on logic. But at the same time, Bond is about tradition and a connection to old world stuff like spying and suits and watches and all this kind of stuff, which again is what makes the PPK kind of work for it. But here's what I think is going to be interesting to see is in 97, right, when Tomorrow Never Dies came out, the P99 was new. Well, the P99 is not new anymore. So I think products go through a natural life cycle of they're new, they're exciting, it's the latest, greatest thing, to it's gotten a little dated, to eventually it's like, yeah, look, it's dated, it's done. But then if time keeps going, a lot of times eventually things become retro cool. So what I'm curious to see as a fan of the Bond series, right, is as time goes, do we get a to a point where the P99 actually checks the same box as the PPK, which is, well, yeah, it's not like modern, the best thing that someone would do, but it's retro cool, and it actually begins to check that box. The other thing that I think we see is the trend with 007 movies is that they have become less campy over time, right? You know, we went from, uh, really, they stayed pretty campy uh, all the way through the Brosnan era, which was not a particularly great era for Bond. GoldenEye's pretty damn good, but beyond that, it's like they, they got pretty bad. But once Daniel Craig came in, there was a, a seriousness to the character that those movies took on. And I just think, okay, if we're getting, let's take the next Bond, right? Whoever's the next person that's going to play Bond. If they continue to go down the path that films historically go, which is to become less campy and take the action and the role more seriously, then they have to use the P99. There's no way you can say we're making the most serious Bond film to date and he's using a Walther PPK, a six shot 380 auto pistol with non-functional sights that's gonna chew up your hands. Like you just can't do that. So, you know, it's tricky. Cinema guy me wants the answer to be the PPK. But my honest answer to not, you know, sort of cop out and leave you guys hanging here. My honest answer is I think the gun that Bond should be using in our current era, I think they should actually go from currently the PPK, I think they should go back to the P99. It is a believable gun that someone in that role would use. And that's my two cents. You guys can roast me down in the comments. But before we go, hey, look, man, if you were carrying uh, this, if this was your carry gun, or if, hey, a P99 Final Edition was your carry gun, uh, hopefully you never have a day where you wind up needing to use it, but if you do, you should probably have insurance to uh, cover yourself if that uh, day ever happens. We use a company called Firearms Legal Protection. They sponsor, um, you know, me and Chris, the channel. I know a lot of you guys um, use them. They've got a few different tiers. They've got one that if you like, hey, look, man, I kind of hang out in my state. I don't really travel that often, but, uh, you know, I do have a, a gun or a legally justified weapon for home defense or I carry a gun. Hey, they got that plan. That one's like, it's like, 10 bucks a month ish. Uh, there's a code you guys can put in. It's 1911, saves you like a third off the, the different uh, subscriptions there. They've got the mid tier one, which is, hey, basically it covers you in all 50 states as long as you're, again, legally carrying all that kind of stuff. They got the family plan, you know, if you have a spouse or anything like that. So check them out. They've been cool with us. Again, code 1911 saves you guys a bunch of money on that. We will see you next time.